Hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Miss Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to catch a vibe with you, our tribe. Unsquint your eyes. I can see you on the mm. monitor. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for you to figure out what the flip you want to do at the beginning of these podcasts. You know what? You could take it over. No, I just, you just, I, I want you to figure it out because you're tinkering. You've been tinkering for like the last five, as long as we've been back for season three. I just, I just want to, I just want to know what it's going to be. I'm going to take an entire season and then season four, I'm going to have it. That's what's going to happen. All right. So season three is going to be six episodes. <laughs> way to put the pressure on yeah um what's up <sighs> one of your kids one of our kids is up actually just came in and tried to wreck our recording for this week mm -hmm. but but god we will not be deterred let's see if she sent that little <laughs> back there a bed and i was like yo don't come back in here again. Yeah, I'm going to... I think Sonoma start, is starting to sleep heavy enough that she can sleep through Savi's cry. Yeah. So I think I just need to start being like, just go back to bed. If you're going to cry, you're going to cry. Or and just, then maybe she'll learn and to we stop can't, waking and, up. And for those of you who are like, oh, you know, just give him a little melatonin. I was like, no, we tried melatonin. Melatonin it's has the inverse it, effect. It's like her kryptonite. It actually wakes her up. Melatonin keeps these kids up, which is ridiculous. I'm going to start sliding them some whiskey. How about that? Give him some whiskey. A little bit of bourbon. Never hurt nobody. They used to tell them to put on their gums. And for their gums, yeah. So we'll just tell people that if they question it, it's about like their gums are aching. Yeah, so when they do like a more? toxicology report on <laughs> your... Toxicology? They don't um, die? They might. No. They're going to be lit. If anything. They're lit in their dreams when they pass out. Other than that, there's really not much that's up. No, yeah. you know I've um, I've been pretty active on social media this week, most <sighs> notably Instagram, just sharing stories. Yeah, you're actually like. I've had I've updated multiple my story multiple times each day the last couple of days. Got some, got some engagement. Hmm. Spe especially people know that you exist. Especially from the sex bots, they are just all over my stories. What are the sex bots saying? You know about the sex bots? They'll sex like your story and then you, because most people, when someone likes their story, they'll go, look, oh, who's looked at my story? Who liked it? You click the profile picture of the person and then they got all their information. They're like, oh, click on this link. And then they got the little picture of them, you know, holding their cup and their stuff. And that's supposed to be bait for you to go click the link. And then wherever it takes you, I don't know, because I don't click the links, but they be, they be in there. They be in the stories. They be liking. So just imagine... You know, you think you got a fire story, right? Like, say you're trying to make people laugh. You think you got a fire story, right? You're like, yo, I'm going to put this up. You put it up, and then you get a notification. You got a like. And it's like, Megan36578 AO. And you're like, God dang it. But you go look anyway, because you you have to, yeah, right? Because yeah. you're, you're curious. And then you click on their profile, and you see, and you got the, the cup and the, you know, the. Where y'all bite your lip and then you like pull the, the bra halfway down where you almost see the, you know, you know what y'all be doing. I don't think so, I've ever done that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's frustrating. But outside of the sex box, I've actually gotten some some, some general engagement. Okay. Which is nice. Because okay. I, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do with my Instagram, you right? You are very uh, all over the place. Because there was a couple of years ago. That you pretended like you didn't have a family. Or where, I went, where I went all in. I was like, I'm going to be, I want to be like one of those cigar accounts cigar and whiskey um and almost like every day i was posting a picture that's back when pictures actually mattered on instagram now it's reels and video but um i went hard and i got my following i got my followers up to like 630 or whatever which is pretty good it's no it's not nothing i mean maybe for you but for me it's not nothing but then you know, I think Savi was born and went back to work, like real work. <laughs> and I just didn't have time to just be buying cigars and taking pictures and stuff. 
so account kind of fell off and then got for a while i was just posting stories of whatever cigar i was smoking but now i'm like because jessica's been whining like oh you're hiding your family from the world so i'm like okay so maybe i could like blend the two but i don't know that those really go together family and cigars right um so for a while i thought i should just make a separate page but i was like i would want that separate page to have my current handle you have to make a new handle but then i'm at risk if i get rid of my current handle of somebody else taking it before i can put it on the other account so this is a lot so i'm just kind of decided to do whatever mm-hmm. this vibe or just yeah. use social media like how everybody else uses social media i guess this vibe but i'm not hiding my family for anybody who might sympathize with my wife um Speaking of social media, mm-hmm. you hear about your boy? Which boy? The four Pete. Fourth indictment for none other One, than Donald J. Trump. He's not my boy. That's your guy. Absolutely not. That's your guy. I, I can't stand him. That's your guy. Um, he's not my guy. I find it interesting that his first name is your father's first name and his middle name is my father's first name. Or coincidental. I, I know, but I was just like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both are very popular names. It's not like they're unique. Are they? Yeah. I mean, my dad's name is popular, but... At a time, yes, Donald was a very popular name popular enough that there are two of them in your family continue two um i'm tired of him i'm tired (laughs) i'm I'm tired of his life of crime i'm tired of hearing the term former president like i'm just tired of hearing twice impeached i'm just i'm (laughs) tired i'm like i just don't at this point it's like why i feel like there's a certain level of criminality that when you reach like we don't even have to go by the law anymore like we just need to kick you out like you can't be here anymore or we're just you know you just can't do stuff and that's really weird like why is he still running for president why are people still supporting him like this this I just don't understand. Like, I'm just in this very confused state. And I'm tired of hearing about him. (laughs) Like, I I don't even care what he's charged with. I don't care. Like, I I don't care that people are like, oh, they're just trying to get whatever they can get out of him. I don't I don't care. Yeah, I just I don't want to hear about him anymore. Like, you're not in the office. You are clearly a criminal. Like, I, no, there's no alleged, there's no, like, legal statements. Like, you are a criminal. You you participate in criminal acts. And you incriminate yourself. So, just for any, just in case people don't really understand what we're talking about, uh, President, former President Trump was indicted for trying to overturn the uh, election, in the presidential election, but was indicted by the state of georgia um and 18 we 18 other no two of them were black yeah i don't know why that you know Uh, you can't uh, break my soul as a beyonce song my soul broke (laughs) i was like dang Uh, indicted via rico and rico charges look i love me i love me a reason to say racketeering 18 other people one of which being um former mayor of new york rudy giuliani who allegedly i'm tired allegedly is broke sold a six million dollar apartment yeah so um a couple of tidbits about this um one because it's uh an indictment via the state should trump somehow be elected can't pardon himself because it's not a federal indictment um and also there's something else i can't remember what it was but um can't pardon himself in oh, what's the other one camera but basically up shit creek because 
So but, he could theoretically win the presidency. And if he gets convicted, he got to go to jail. So our president could be in, in jail. jail. <laughs> Which is so wild. Like, you could be a felon and you can't vote. But you could be indicted for any crime. And that's why I'm and over can run it. from president. That's why I'm over it. No, I really want the, like, I'm not one for drama. I want this to get messy. Like, I want him to, like, leave. Like, not go to Georgia. Like, avoid it. Just be like, I'm Donald Trump. I can't be indicted because I'm going to be president so again. So, the prosecutor um, is looking to start the trial next March. Mm-hmm. On my father's birthday. March 4th. Because I kept saying it, and I was like, why do y'all keep saying March 4th? Yeah. Which would be right around uh, the I right around the, our nephew's birthday too. <laughs> sure, which is right around the time that uh, presidential campaigns like really start picking up steam. I think I can't remember when the first like. Um, this could be good for us. Cause, good for us. I mean, people who just don't want him to be president, like let him go, let him run, let him take the Republican ticket, and then let him get convicted before elections and then the republican party is going to have to scramble to find a replacement i'm here for it this is this is let's do it you know i don't really like i don't really like anybody i don't either he's running a, i mean i'd rather Biden just, is, can we skip a president like can we who's just gonna run the country just get congress and senate like how it is now congress not Congress and Senate, just Congress. <laughs> Congress and then Senate. Congress is, the Senate is part of Congress. Yeah, but I feel like it's them two. Nah, it's Senate and the House. Oh, maybe I meant Congress. Whatever. You okay, I'm just, just get two I just, I just want to make sure you understand how it's. I just don't think we need a president right now. We do. We, 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 do. we don't. Um. We can't get it right. We don't need a president. You know, this video surfaced of Biden in, in 2020 when he was running. I guess he was at some um, some plant somewhere, and one of the uh, the union, I guess there was a union. One of the people was just like challenging him on uh, gun oh, control. No. <laughs> he was like, "You plan to do this?" This is Biden was like, "You're full of shit." <laughs> Old Joey B. At yeah, least he's real about it. He's like, it. come on, man. You kidding me? Um, but uh, not all um, not all roses and, and rainbows with Biden lately. It's not. Because we've got the, uh, got the crisis in Maui. Um, but that's not just, his fault. Just so happened to occur during his one of his vacations was asked to comment on the situation and he actually said no comment okay i don't have any issue which which, i mean ultimately i mean i guess is okay he could have at least been like you're the one one you're the i mean the optics are are horrible right because the president is like it's like pastors with money right it's never like people are always going to criticize you, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're the president, you're vacationing. People are always going to say, "Oh, you could be doing something about this, right?" Because there's always going to be something popping He's off. He's not a god. He's just a guy. It doesn't matter. You're the president. Well, like, so, certain know. titles come with certain scrutiny, and the Trump presidency. Trump would have been at Mar-a-Lago. Talking. I mean, about people. I mean, liberals criticize Trump all the time true. for everything. So I, I mean, I it's, it's I exactly think, the same. I don't think there was anything. I think he could have just said, you know, I'm just saying prayers. the optics were bad. I You're think, vacationing. Um, was Hawaii. Was he vacationing like two weeks ago? I don't know. Brother was still on the beach last I saw. And he was in Hawaii? He was in Hawaii. Oh, like over the last, last few days. No, not in Hawaii, but he oh. was, he was, I can't remember where he was vacationing. But, um, he was just like, no comment. And then, talking about they're going to send people $700. Again. It's $700 more than they had. True. Now, again, this is before all the other, all the other like agencies and mm-hmm. people go in FEMA, and then and FEMA Red and all, Cross. they get in and they start pumping re, uh, aid and resources Oprah, in. Oprah, because Oprah got a house on that island. But again, one time $700 versus 
all these other billions that they've sent to Ukraine, and I get it. They, it's not just going over in cash. It's going over in the form of weapons and trucks and tanks and all these things. I'm just saying the optics are not great. And I get it. I get it both ways. I think I don't. I don't care. I mean, not I, that I don't. I don't. So you don't care about not, you don't care about the wildfire. I care about the wildfire. You don't care about sky being on fire. I the wildfires. I care about the wildfires in Maui. I don't care about how people want him to handle this. He's 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 no matter what he does, he's not going to satisfy anybody. Well, this anybody is true. else in the role would not satisfy everybody. I know that people are like I saw an article about how Oprah owns a house on in Maui on stolen land, and I was like. People own houses on stolen land here. Like, people Our, the have probably houses stolen. that were built by stolen people. So, like, I, I don't... My thing is, I think he's going next week. I personally don't think he even needs... Like, I think next week is a good time for him to go. Because this is the president. When you think about... If he comes to a location that's having a natural disaster, and you think about security and resources, like it, he is more of a deterrent from attention than than he is if he's there. So I personally think it's good that he's not going, that he's not there right now, because right now we need to focus on these people who we're still. I think there's still a thousand people who are missing, um, or maybe it's a thousand people who have died. There are people who need to be reunited with their pets. There are people who need to figure out how are we starting over from scratch. And I don't think that the president being on the island of maui at this very moment is going to help any of that honestly the cost to fly him from dc all the way to maui i think that it would be best used for them to take those funds and re implement put it back into the economy so, there so i maintain the optics. not taking anything away from what you just said because I could I could get there with you. The optics aren't great. They're just not. And that's and this is this is what it is. I think I just don't care. You don't care about the optics. I, I don't care about the optics. F them optics. <laughs> F them optics. Yes, because there's no All optics don't matter. There's no huh? angle of op <laughs> opticity that's going to be appealing to everybody. So forget the optics. He didn't say he. Yeah, he could have said. Know, he could have said thoughts and prayers. It's it's our condolences. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be that guy. You already are. Right. But it's not that far from your boy, Ted Cruz. Flying to Mexico, wasn't he flying? To Mexico? He was flying somewhere on vacation during uh, what was it during COVID, right? No, Was during during the, the, the grid, power the power outage. Flying out during the power outage. It's, it's, not, it's not all that different. It's very similar. Those optics. Those weren't great optics. No, I mean. But you know what? I also now, I'm gonna say I'm going to say, say Ted Cruz is worse because he's trash. But looking at it objectively, it's not that different. Was Biden already on vacation when the wildfire started? Or did I think he? It, yeah. So the fires were going before he went. Like he was already in in the vacation route. Ted Cruz was like, oh, Ted we Cruz ain't got no power. Like, <laughs> Let me get to Cancun and hit a resort. All inclusive. People were like, Texas was like, we ain't got no power. Ted Cruz was like, no, y'all yeah. ain't got no power. <laughs> I got power. I got AC. Y'all ain't got, got no tacos. power. I'm about to catch this, about to catch this flight. Flights, not feelings. Um, about to catch this flight. But you're right. That's actually a very good comparison. Um, but yeah, I don't, I just, I just don't care about optics right now. I get it, but maybe I'm just tired. Maybe I. It maybe. was so. It was so. It was such an avoidable. Yeah, he could have. It he, was such an avoidable bad look. He could have responded better. That I. I will say, like I think people can get over the fact that he's not there because again, I don't know that this idea. I mean, he's that, not going to do nothing. Exactly. But it's it's it's, but it's walk optics. around and like it's smile presence. at people. I mean, what what had happened in Florida when the people want to feel like came people want to feel like they matter and the president they, being there means they matter no yeah it does it's believe optics. it or not it's optics but it also there there is there are certain people Didn't the who, president show up to puerto rico and throw <laughs> and those people at, felt no they did not it was probably cheap paper towels you know, the too. four of us the four, Joe, Trump's form was tight. I'm not gonna lie. No, I'm not I'm gonna never, hate. His form was going. tight. He had the guide hand. I will only give him credit. The guide for, hand was solid. There's only one thing on this podcast I've given Trump credit for, and it was the fact that he said, "If you keep testing people, stop the count." 
stop the count. And I was stop like, this is, this is, this man is a fool, but this is the this most is intelligent thing I've ever heard come out of Broken his mouth. Clocks right twice if a day. you keep testing it, this testing people, it. you're going to get positive results. It, it seems simple to me. It's not rocket it, it science. Brilliant. Stop testing. Just, you want people to stop freaking out about the COVID numbers? Stop testing. And stop nobody producing will, numbers. Nobody will know. I stood with him on that. I get That's it. the only thing I've ever stop the count. Ever been in unison with Trump on. Stop. Trump on Twitter was was something special, to put it. Where is he now? On one of Truth his social. That's his his social media account. I was supposed to moderate that. I'm glad you didn't. They had proposed. They had put up the job requisition. Um, and they were like a new social media that's supposed to be like for freedom of speech and everything, but you have to be able to freedom have, of speech. yeah, but you have to have like an open mind and be able to handle like free thought. Um, so there was like such a process because I used to be a community manager, uh, a virtual community manager, and I ended up looking it up. And I was like, oh, okay. And I think I actually like signed up before I realized what it was. And I was like, oh, F that. Wouldn't have been good optics. So if somebody sees me on there, <laughs> I never like followed up. That's like when I joined, um, what was that? I joined Parlor just to see what, to see what it was like. Is that one of those? That, that was the Kanye's? right, that was the one Kanye tried to buy. Candace Owens' husband was the oh, yeah. like CEO or something of it. I mean, everybody's got bad optics. I just want to see what everybody's it was like. Everybody's done something that. Has and I was bad like, damn, optics. I didn't even make. I didn't even make like a fake. You use your account. I just use my email, <laughs> so like David A. Rush. Here, <laughs> my my whole government on the username. Um, yeah, optics were great, but you know, it is, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But indicted four times. I don't really even know what indicted once means. Once part of once part of a racketeering I keep, I keep Rico case. I to look up the word indictment. Like I just hear it so much that I think I know what it means. And what's crazy is for Rudy Giuliani to be included in this. I think he was one. He like kind of pioneered the Rico charge. Like he's one of the pioneers of it because he's you know New York. He tried to take down like mafia bosses and people like that. And now to be subject of one is. Mm -hmm. But he's got something coming down in New Oddly York. Oddly poetic. Too. They're trying to keep him from doing like any kind of work in New York. Like New York said, he's you know go somewhere else. Um, cousin Mark, shout out, is uh, very high on Rudy Giuliani. That was his mayor through nine eleven. Was New York's mayor? He through, was America's mayor through through nine eleven. They literally um, called him America's mayor. Yeah, sure. Well, of course, because they sensationalize everything. Um, so I, I can't imagine what it's like for people who have who were there, you know, during that time when he was heralded as America's mayor. Um, to be disappointed by him. To see what what's come of him now. Um, it's interesting. So I was watching David Muir. But because you're indicted doesn't necessarily mean you're guilty either. So I still need to look up what indicted means. Um, that means a grand jury wasn't has... was indicted? Excuse me? Was Ghost indicted? Or was Angie indicted? I feel like Did I you really just pivot to a fictional TV show? I feel like what that word... <laughs> I'm trying to get context in terms of what exactly indictment is. Um... um I thought one of them, or it was just the ADA. I can't remember. I, I've tried to and erase. I never finished that show. I've tried to erase but, power from um, I was watching. <laughs> you just said ghost like like he's a regular cat. I mean, you talk <laughs> like, about, you reference Lobos all the time. Yo, Lobos is, so he's real somewhere. He's out um, there somewhere. A real, lo real life Lobos. I was watching World News with David Muir, and... I was seeing like clips of Giuliani and I just realized like how important the people you keep around you are for you because before this Trump thing, like one, I don't even know the last time I had referenced Rudy Giuliani before anything with Trump um, becoming president and all of that good stuff. But like he had, again, he was America's mayor. He was the mayor who stood by his city and united his city and kept that city strong. So the idea that now, like, he just seems like an idiot. And it's essentially because he 
aligned himself with the wrong person that's i don't know that just i have like these weird existential moments where like i just think about like it, it's one decision that you make with your life that mm. will that can change the entire trajectory and i don't know that there's anything rudy giuliani can do in the present to make up for the what in four years his the reputation that he has ruined for himself yeah from what 2011 2001 excuse me um so yeah it, it was just like a moment that i had where i was like or maybe it was inside Edi yeah inside edition also had a segment they were showing him like you know how he's lately he's been talking with like his arms real fanatic and all mm -hmm. that or frantic excuse me and he looks like a mad person and i was like this is the guy who like we really had in such high esteem yo because you know a terrible thing happened in his city and he still made sure to keep that city intact as best he could so yeah it was just i don't know it it, it just reminds me like how how the mighty have fallen that that too but it's just literally like you know the scripture like it's important to have wise counsel like it it is like it's important to have wise counsel it's important to be wise counsel because if trump had wise counsel he wouldn't be in this foolishness he is now and if trump was wise counsel people around him 18 17 people wouldn't have to roll their butts down to fulton county it's it's a it's a mess it's a heated mess it is a hot mess yeah shame and you know you know who's worked out pretty well out of all of this hmm. mike pence because ain't nobody dropping his name for nothing he was a man who was like he knew he had foresight he knew when to jump out and he did because he's not part of this because you would think in this type of scandal your vp would be in on it in some capacity but you know what vps aren't really vpn so <laughs> never mind i take that back VPs aren't really I mean, I'd be forgetting that Biden has a VP. Kamala? Straight forgetting about Kamala. <laughs> like, when Barack was president, I knew about Joe. I saw Joe. I don't ever remember Kamala until she's going off on Florida or she happens to be visiting North Carolina for something. But, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's uh, was very interesting. Was how, it? How, sure. how the mighty have fallen. Yeah. Um, Florida. Well, just interesting. Just a wild, wild place. It is. Not wild, but just wild. A lot of things that they're doing. They're going, trying very hard to erase the uh, American history. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's what it is just trying to erase American history. And when you when you think about progress for black people in this country mm -hmm. throughout different times in history, what it's always been met with, right? Um, whether it be like Reconstruction, Jim Crow, right? Um, When you think about George Floyd and how racial inequality and systemic racism and a lot of these things came to the forefront and kind of captured America and a lot of companies, whether it was just performative or whatever, made um, concerted efforts and, and made initiatives to boost diversity and inclusion to um, have Juneteenth off Juneteenth off there was a lot of short term progress you could there was a decent amount of short term progress you could say was made um, for black people and just the awareness of the plight of black people whether it be modern day or tradition or, or historically throughout this country um, and now this kind of seems like we're in this period of like the resistance of all that. We've kind of been here for a little bit, right? Like when you 
look at just from a corporate sense a lot of the layoffs that have been happening because everybody's been trying to push us into a recession for like the last year and a half, right? Everybody's been saying, oh, there's a recession coming, recession coming. But the economy says differently. But a lot of these companies, because they thought a recession was coming or maybe wanted a recession to come, started laying people off. What departments did they go to first? Diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. All of them. And then marketing. And then marketing. That's how I had somebody tell me, had a coworker tell me, like, what value does the, do does uh, ERG groups? What do they? What value do they provide? ERG um, employee resource groups. Oh, what are the, what are those? They're like black people in <laughs> for your oh. company, Hispanic people, company, gay. Uh, women and yeah. women, women and, wine, women women and, and yeah. boards. Yeah, okay. Um, so we're kind of in that space, and, and you, what you see a lot of a lot of states are starting to do is restrict how we teach, like you said, American history. Um, I think that's I think that's disappointing, and I think it's on it's incumbent upon um, anybody with any sort of platform, um, any sort of influence, to really call that that stuff out um I, I feel for people in florida parents in florida parents of kids um and parents who want their kids to you know when it's when it's necessary mm -hmm. um learn about the truth of of this country and how uh black people were treated i just don't understand the logic because it's like if grandpa was a murderer we can't just forget grandpa because like grandpa had to have a baby with grandma for me to be here for like dad to be here or mom to be here for me to be here like we can just i guess families would just not talk about it mm -hmm. um like i say this and i think about the scene in hitch where he takes her to ellis <laughs> island and she was like hmm. um but it's like these things had to happen for us to get here right and i just don't understand the game and it's not just i think from my perspective it's not just black people you're affecting because black people are going to find out like in 2023 we are fortunately in an age where we have youtube and unless they're going to south north korea or china and regulate what urls people go to um you can find out and, and god willing you have parents aunts uncles who can you know give you this information or you have an interest to find it but it's not like just because Florida is not acknowledging it, this is all going away. Like we, we know there are people who know. There, there, there are books. There are, there are resources. So yeah, I just don't but understand. When you, but when, you try to, when you're trying to break down structures or change structures, there's only so much like to take it back to slavery right mm -hmm. um you had the slaves who could teach themselves to read who taught themselves how to write you had the ones who were rebellious in nature and, and tried to get away mm -hmm. right but there was all you always needed someone who was of one of the you. other side mm -hmm. to, to, to advance to, to advance you right like harriet tubman received help along the underground railroad because there were there were whites there were people who weren't enslaved who were willing to help them out um, and if those people can't sympathize or empathize with your plight, they're less likely to be able to help you change those structures. So if you have a generation of kids who grew up thinking like, I mean, yeah, slavery was bad, but you know, you got blacksmith skills and you know, <laughs> you had to corral horses and you learned how to garden and stuff. Like I think slavery was just like an internship. <laughs> you know then those kids grow to become managers and mid-level managers and ceos and, and you know you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. so so yeah black people are i don't know a black parent who's not in denial um who won't make sure that their kids understand the history of this country as it pertains to people who look like them but it's the other people we're worried about because believe it or not, I mean, hate it, hate it or love it. Um, when you talk about systemic racism, 
people who aren't going to be learning about this stuff are part of that system mm -hmm. and have parents and grandparents who are part of that system and will probably move into positions who are part of that system as well as black people too but still um you know you kind of just chip away at things and eventually you look up in 50 40 60 70 years you know history looks different mm -hmm. it's know, like what it's like what the daughters of the confederacy did for you know us here in our the the history of the civil war mm -hmm. and how it's taught like look at it they like, that, like we're, ahead of we're time. a part of that right um i went to school in union county and some of that uh what do they call it um lost was it lost cause what's it called i can't remember um a lot of that Where? propaganda that the daughters of confederacy tried to try to instill in in the south a lot of that still mm -hmm. was it was there when i was coming through and a lot of it's still there now Yeah, I just, I think a lot of it is just not wanting to accept privilege. And we've touched on this before, and I don't really feel like going that deep into it. But there are plenty of people who are like, I recognize that my ancestor may have owned slaves, and but that's not me, and that, and I recognize that I'm, adv I'm advanced because of the position black people were put in, but I want to be better and I want my kids to know. Um, you want to pause? Um, so they're not fearful. And I think that's something that I find most admirable when it comes to allies or I guess modern day abolitionists is that they recognize that, you know, being able to recognize how you've benefited from something and not being fearful that you're going to lose your position like there are people who and i know i like make occasional jokes and stuff about like racist blah 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 blah. but there are there are people who are genuinely like i do want an equal playing field i do mm. want to make sure that everyone does have a fair chance there are people who don't because they fear and I think it's more so they recognize that if they don't have the advantage if they're not further if they're not closer to the finish line than someone else that they're not going to get there at all um, and that's I think that's just an insecurity but I do know that there are people who you know just like we had abolitionists and I mean some abolitionists were still kind of kind of dirty they were like we don't want you enslaved but we also don't want you living next door. I mean, Lincoln um, tried to send all the black people out of the country. He did. And Lincoln is probably got a little black in him himself. Um, and he's just a questionable man. And he, we, I just, I don't care to talk about him. But, um, but yeah, I think people well, recognize that. And Lincoln slender. <laughs> people recognize that you, that they're in danger if yeah. the playing field is actually evened. And people also don't recognize that a lot of us know the playing field's not going to ever be even. But we just want a shot. And we know if we get that shot, we'll be successful, we'll get there. So I, I, insecurity is such an ugly thing, no matter how it, it plays itself out. You know, when you are insecure about how you stand, how you're positioned, um, it makes you do ugly things to try and protect yourself. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Florida, Texas, Arkansas. Yeah. Did you hear about the buoys that have like saws that he put in the water? I think he put in like the Rio Grande. Rio Grande. Lo siento. Um, I always hear people saying it incorrectly. I wanted to be respectful. But I hope that's not culturally appropriating. Um, yeah, they're like buoys and like two bodies have already like surfaced. Mm. So like if you try to like 
go around them or climb them it'll like cut you and kill you and the person who i saw shared it and they were like yeah and these are your pro-life bible wielding people so it's just interesting how we're able and and i feel like modern day immigration and how some people view it is the ability to justify evil acts towards people in terms of protecting is the same justification people used to em- enslave people kidnap them from their homeland and force them to work for no income whatsoever so um th- th- this is a portion of history repeating itself mm. and just the dangers of being able to find a way to defend what you're doing Sorry. This no, it's heavy. It's very heavy. I'm talking about people getting sliced up. It's, it's deep. For a better life. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. It's the part where you pivot. I, I need to. We can't, we can't stay here. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know where I want to go quite. Um, I kind of want to go messy. But I also want to go uplifting so you can see my struggle. Right. Um, I think I'm going to go with uplifting, though. Okay. Because I don't think it'll take us, it'll keep us very long. You shared a story. You shared a story. Devon, Devon Franklin. Mm-hmm. Talking about. Uh, d- tell me. Tell me what the story's. Um, tell me what the story's about. This is really interesting. In verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? (laughs) Huh? Am I reading it right? It says, the man said, Eve came into the earth. Watch this. Adam was the one who was broken. Eve came into the earth whole. She had both ribs. Society wants women to believe you're broken if you're not with somebody. Mm. But God says the woman came into the earth complete, not seeking or needing anyone or anything. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you got to stand in your power. You are one of one. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. You as a woman are complete. You're whole. Ah, and I got to say it because I'm tired of us supporting a culture that tries to make women think there's something wrong with them if they're not married. It's just not true. I initially was going to ignore it. I don't know what compelled me to, because I don't, I don't watch stories with, with volume. Cause I, just, <laughs> I know, I'm always sending you stuff and you just don't respond. Because like you funny, didn't watch it I with, didn't watch it the, with sound. the sound. Because um, it's just so much work to like... Hit the volume rocker? How loud. No, because mine, I have to turn on the, the volume, the sound, like I have to flip this on. And then I have to turn on the volume rocker. I have to close the Instagram app. And then go back to get audio to play. It's really weird. Um, but he he's, he shared a sermon. Well, I was going to skip it because I was like, ain't that Megan Fox's ex-husband? Megan Good. Dang. Stop doing this. <sighs> I didn't even, dang. Megan Good. Megan Good's ex-husband. Um, whose brother was on Empire. I'm sorry. I, so I, they are related. Yeah, they I, look too much alike to not be. I literally said his brother. Okay. And he married the woman. I thought that they were the same person for a long no, time. No, it's his brother. He I married. Like, he a pastor? Huh? Yeah. I was like, he, no, I was like, when I thought they were the same, oh. I was like, he a pastor? I a raunchy role for him to be taking. And then he married his <clears throat> co-star from Empire. Mm. And then she and Megan Good were in Harlem together. Mm-hmm. So I just thought that was really cute. Um, she's from the Cayman Islands. She's real. She's real sweet. Um, but yeah, so I was gonna ignore it. But then I was like, I'll watch it and see what it's about. I just felt compelled to watch it. And it was essentially saying 
that women came to the earth whole because mm. God created them whole. Mm. And there's this concept that's been instilled in us to f make us think that we're broken, that we need a man to complete us, but God actually created us completed. Mm. So we need to essentially stop walking in this mindset that we we are lacking, we are less than. And I I just appreciated it. And I, I just, I was like, oop, that's literally what I put, oop. Um, for like whoever needs this word, catch it. Um, because I think there's, you know, we just talked about, I was just talking about insecurity, but I think there's a lot of insecurity in women. There's a lot on our shoulders. Um, and I've said this before, and I've been around people who are like, and boys are a treasure too. And I'm like, yeah, that's great for them. But like, the Bible like literally says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. And that's one of my favorite scriptures. Um, one, because I memorized it. And two, because it literally like lets, it, there's, there are so many affirming scriptures for women, but like, if you really want to hone in on one in terms of why, and this is me getting real biblical on you. So like, if you're like super new age, like you can just fast forward. Um, but if you're, if you really process that, like there's no scripture that I can think of off the top of my head, but I ain't got the Bible memorized. So please don't come for me if I'm wrong. But I don't recall a scripture where it's like, she who finds a man or she who gets a husband gets peace because she doesn't um well i mean genesis does say that god made eve to yeah to be his help me because yeah. she because god was like i knew i created this incomplete creature who's going so, to need help so a contrarian not that that's me but would argue that since god made man first adam first and made Rough eve <laughs> You don't put out the first draft of work. Oh, uh, that's good. Like if you if you like you type up an email and then you read so, it to make sure it's good. You don't just send it because you know. No, the rough draft problem. would have been everything that happened before the flood. That's the real rough draft. So I mean, um, that's, that's rough draft adjacent. One would argue that could argue if you're to interpret, right? If you're an interpreter, right? If you're somebody who does this, not me, but you can put your shoulders down. Um, sorry, they were kind of creeping up a little bit. That. God made Adam first, created Eve to be helped meet for him. Therefore, the purpose of a woman is to be a help meet for her husband. I'm not saying that's what I believe, that I what I subscribe to, but I'm just saying you could one could interpret things that way. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, that's why I said could. Yeah, you shouldn't. Why not? So, because it's wrong. How is it wrong? Because I don't even really remember what you said. Because I remember you were listening. I set the dishwasher to a th like a three hour delay, and I guess we've talked so long that it's kicked on. But um, anyway, circling back to the original point, um, forget your little crunch here. No, uh, I I think that's I think that, that should be addressed. I mean, God created Adam and gave him work. And then was like, oh, you need a little help. So I'm going to make you a perfect. So he didn't make him a son or another another man. Or he didn't make him some other creature mm -hmm. that could help him about. He made a woman mm -hmm. specifically of him to help him. Mm -hmm. So. Again, I'm just saying you, you take the you, rough draft as your template. And then you figure out what you need to improve, and that's what you submit, and you get your A. But Plus. that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't address the fact that God still, according to the way that Moses wrote Genesis. I mean, do we know was Moses stationary? <laughs> was he writing Genesis while at they what were, point? At what point in the like, mountain was he? Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Had, was he dehydrated? <laughs> Was that one of the tablets that got thrown? Like, I mean, there's the so, crack tablet. there's, there's I'm just so saying. much like, I'm just that saying could be, could be lost, but essentially, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm of, I think I'm of you and I are on this in on the same side on this. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there because 
because the Bible can be interpreted in so many different oh, yeah. ways there depending is upon a scripture to support the reader and the, anything the, you the need preacher. To do. So, but I think that that could be, but that scripture could be what's could be sort of like a, a, a leading factor. I think that scripture is more so confirming that women have an assignment when they are paired or f or the right man with the right vision with the right purpose finds them well i'll be honest with you as i read it when i was growing up it kind of made me think that she was made to as it was as it was stated to be a help me for for adam like that was the purpose so for i can only imagine if if uh if if in some Bible study somewhere, um, it might have been taught that, you know, ultimately you need to be married because that's the purpose of woman as according to God and what he did in the in Genesis. I think that's the purpose of that woman. And but some Eve women is, can but, choose to But we're talking about ancestors. I always interpreted Eve as the partner. Adam had an assignment that he could not complete by himself. God recognized that. God gave him a partner. That partner was Eve. Was she perfect? No. But she was a partner nonetheless. Hmm. Um, but I, I share... You know, it's so, it's so fascinating that because be, because God gives free will right there's his purpose for us and then there's what we choose to do mm -hmm. right so if you read genesis god tells you why how he made eve and why he made her and then eve does what Eve's going to do so when you say i think she was what how did you i can't remember how you phrased it remember. but she wasn't perfect she no definitely not but neither was adam absolutely rough draft absolutely but we can talk about what she did or what what people who are spoken of in the bible did but if we're to believe god is the creator who also gave us free will we have to also look at his purpose for us mm -hmm. so his intention his purpose for eve one could posit based on the scripture was to be a help me for adam that was which that. no what i'm saying is that people can take that and sit in uh, as opposed to um kind of what not saying that women are incomplete if they don't have a husband but that a, one could take from that the purpose of a woman is to be a wife see i take it as she was designed with purpose with intention god knew why he put her here so it shows that a woman comes n is created with her intention intact whereas a man has to find his intention has to find his purpose um because like like adam had like yeah he had he had to like name everything he had to yeah i mean just very very insignificant tasks, right? Yeah, I mean, because we mm. renamed everything anyway. Um, <laughs> and then, like, only two of everything he named survived after, like, a thousand years. Do we need to go stop that? Or is it gonna, is it gonna feed in? Let's just roll with it. Okay. Um, do we need to give her something? Let's just roll with it. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, and I have to re-listen to what he said, but I've always been because my i feel like my life's not necessarily a reflection of what i thought no. i i'm very passionate about women being secure in themselves before they start seeking a man before they you know build relationship before they convince themselves that they want to be a wife yeah. um and i love the reason why i shared it is because i really want women to reframe their mindset of I'm not doing something right because I'm not married, because I right. don't have a husband. There's something yeah, think, wrong with me. I think the why? gist of what he was saying is you're not incomplete because you're no, not married. You are like you are, you are by yourself. You are complete. Yeah. Um. And and so, and to hear it from a man, 
was also a reason why I shared it because yeah. wish I had said it first but you didn't. didn't women are women we're always like rooting for Damn each other divine. encouraging each other and this is a man who's recently divorced so he could be like on a bitter train um so i applauded that too because i was like he could because the thing about people who have pulpits is you can manipulate the pulpit you just you, you manipulate the word of god you can manipulate the pulpit and you can really like there's Kool-Aid. a lot of responsibility to anybody who is there's a lot of ownership to anyone who is responsible for people's faith and if you manipulate the word to fit your own personal bias it can it, it's just it's a very gray area it's a very difficult area so i really appreciated that a man recognized that and and spoke out on it in a, in a place where people could access it so um that's why i shared it i just i get tired of women settling tired i do i get tired of women settling, settling. i get tired of women dealing with like foolishness from men foolishness um yeah because there's a lot of food i have a lot of single friends and i you know i see conversations i see interactions um kind of foolishness i watch tv shows and it there's a (laughs) lot i'm just gonna ignore you there's a lot of foolishness. tv shows i mean we can't can't lump that that they can't be a factor those things are based off of someone's reality someone's perception or their imagination imagination Or or their bias is rooted in reality in some capacity so you know I, I was like, you know what? He's really rooting for women. And I appreciated that. And he's really like, because we need confident women because confident women won't take foolishness. A mm. woman who recognizes that I am complete. Mm. I don't need a man to complete me. I don't need to have children to be complete. I was put on this earth complete is, mm. is, is a very powerful woman. And she's not going to take foolishness she's not going to take you know dude talking to me and talking to three other women at the same time she's Mm. not going to take someone you know putting toxicity in her life she's not going to take stress she's not going to take any of that because she recognizes that she is a complete product there is no updates there are no upgrades she like she comes out of the packaging how she was supposed to be and i really wanted people to watch that and be like yeah Mm. this is who i want to be so that's that's why I shared it. That's 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 absolutely why I shared it because the way dating is these days mm. and the way relationships are and it's 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 not appealing. Even marriages. Marriages are not appealing from some people. We oh, know some, some, people, some we people. know some married couples and I'm like you don't make marriage cute. Like if I was looking at you I would not want to be married. Yeah, there was one couple we used to rock with. And I would be like, so why? Why are <laughs> why, you married? Why did y'all do this? And it's like, not even just like arguing. It's like, what do y'all do? It's like a genuine disdain. For each other. For each other. And it's like, you know, you don't have to. Like, who are you trying to prove it to? Yeah, like, just. Because a bad marriage that's just together cut, just doesn't. Cut, just cut your losses. And I think that's something that married people also don't recognize. Like, you, yes, your marriage is for you and your family. I personally think marriage is is an example that you are, so, you're literally a walking billboard of what God intended marriage to be. If you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer. Um, if you're not, continue to fast forward. Um <laughs> Because I, I just, I don't, I, I don't really, again, I don't really feel like making the effort of like, making things politically correct or you know trying to make everyone feel welcome right now um you're welcome but if you don't want to hear this like just fast forward um or go to the last one of the chapters loaded for you um but like this might be the last i've gotten this new perspective of marriage where it's like god designed this thing this collaboration of two people from two different backgrounds and you're legitimately a a poster you're a walking billboard of this thing that is not perfect but is supposed to be beautiful like that and that's how like when we're not perfect we're not perfect you're not perfect but (laughs) i i (laughs) love my my part of one of my new 
purposes, missions, is to make sure that when people see our marriage, they see how genuine it is, but it makes them want not this, but something close to it. Like, I, I feel like our marriage should be a template that someone should look onto and be like, I want something similar to that. I'm not saying we, we're like, oh my gosh, we're just the best married couple ever and you should want what we have. But like, I, want, I, I feel that it is a part of our task for other, for singles, for other married, freshly married couples, for old, long married couples who are toxic for each other, should look and be like, what is it about them and their marriage that, that we can see this, this happiness? This, this, and the same thing should apply to parenthood. Like, you should be the type of parent that some other parent is watching you and learning, or someone who is not in parenthood is watching you and, and seeing something in the way you do your job, your, your role as a parent, that makes them desire that. Recognizing the hardship, the work, the, 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 the difficulty in moments, but also seeing that like at the core, there's, there's something happy. So that's, that's just my opinion. I loved it. If you can find it, I would definitely encourage you to put it in the episode. But, um, oh, yeah, I can find it. Okay. I'm fine. But yeah, it it was it I'll was just it an encour- it even encouraged me. Like it's just an encouraging it was an encouraging thing and it's encouraging to come from a man because our society like women aren't always encouraged by men to recognize that, you know, you were good. And we are good. Yeah, y'all right. <laughs> y'all are y'all are decent. You're more than decent. Um What's up? Thanks. Cosign everything. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Speaking of relationships. Oh God. Oh, and I want to talk, touch the uh, the blind side stuff, but we might not have time. We also have to touch the yard. The yard. Picnic. Hmm. The picnic. The what? The picnic. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um Kiki Palmer and Usher are at it again. This time in a I gotta go watch the video. In a music recently released, I think it would drop today. Music video. I think it's titled Boyfriend. Yeah. Cause the teaser came out Monday. Yeah. Where they take a uh somewhat called subtle which may be underselling it dig at Kiki's boyfriend maybe ex-boyfriend yeah I was gonna say I don't think they're still together um was it Darius Jackson mm. Darius I think it was Darius Jackson might have been um I just want to go on record that I have nothing against Kiki I have absolutely nothing against Usher but if this ain't the messiest petty shit I have seen in some time it's totally unnecessary oh it was great but it's the, it's, even, it's entertainment the little teaser i heard sounded good it's it's very entertaining someone posted on the shade room like someone else's tweet and they were like y'all essentially what you said but just tying in the fact that like the internet destroyed this man and here they come and here they come to back the truck up over his body it's just, but this is this kinda, is. I mean, a full ca- serving de- of petty. Kind of deserved. But that I mean, you a mom though. <laughs> do they say that in the song? She says it. She is like the the video is like her this night out where she's like dancing and she's kind of like imagining Usher or whatever. She's even kind of dressed like him in one of his. I can't remember what video it would be. And then at the end of the video, she like wakes up because she was supposed to be at like a performance or something, and somebody's calling her and she's like. Oh damn! She's like, I missed it. She's like, I just been so tired. And then she looks at the camera. She's like, "Cause I'm my mom." <laughs> and then she starts laughing, like only Kiki can do. Um, I can hear the laugh. <laughs> it's just, oh it's just so, so know. unnecessarily was, petty. I, I, you know what? And I'm just like, you I know, bet she got but a check. I, but you know what? It worked because I watched it. You did. I didn't watch it. I didn't have the chance. I got and I'm it. just like ushered. Damn that Look, Usher. Uh, Usher. He let him have his moment. 
his moment. It's Usher. He's had his his whole yeah. career has been his moment. Yes. But we need to like erase like he did some shady stuff, so we need to erase that stuff. Um, and this is doing it. I stand with it. I just I just wanted to call out that it's just messy and petty. Mm. But I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And this is usually this isn't even my cup of tea, and I I'm just kind of. It looked like a very, it, it, it was definitely an Usher video. The, I, again, I only saw the teaser, but the teaser gave, um, there's another song of his that the teaser gave, but like, it's 118. like love in this club, like, you know, Usher videos just have this mm-hmm. spirit about them. Um, I stood with it. I feel bad for this man. I feel embarrassed for this man. And Darius I know. Jackson. I, I know this is going to eat him up. Um, and her next album, if she makes an album, is probably going to be fire. Yeah, probably. Petty fire. So. Petty fires everywhere. <laughs> you know, I watched the um, I watched the last episode of that the other night. Yo, I thought about rewatching it. I was like, I think it's been it was, long enough. It's a really and good you series. Don't know, I don't, I, you know I don't watch shows over again. You don't do anything over again. No. What? It was a very, it was a very good series. I don't even understand what that was supposed <laughs> I to. Imply. I just kept waiting for you to respond, thinking it was innuendo. Um, yeah, it was a very good series. But moving on. Mm-hmm. We going to the yard? You want to talk about the yard? I don't think we're gonna get to the blind side. So, if y'all were expecting to hear us talk about the blind side, I'm sorry. So. There was a Greek picnic D- DC. in D.C., Washington, D.C., Chocolate City, um, a city that probably has the most Greeks per capita. I don't know. I'm making up the statistic. You are. But I feel like with Howard. Because Atlanta exists. Yeah, but between Howard and you got Ball State and just like all of, there's like a constant. I just feel like there's a lot. There's a lot Atlanta of exists. I feel like a city that has a Greek picnic, like a real Greek picnic. Um, but you know what? There weren't a lot of people strolling, so maybe not. Anyway, or maybe a lot of them just didn't show up to the picnic. So, you, I think you sent me the first story, or you said something like, did you see this? And I was like, what are you talking about? And you were like, watch this. So you're like, who's out of place? And I was like, honestly, all of them were a little offbeat. All right, don't have the AKAs coming for you okay i i'm I'm not gonna destroy anybody but all of them were and you know the thing about the thing about greeks because i've been around a lot of them two of my girls are are greek they will call out when someone just ain't there um so they were strolling and there was one who was just she did stand out but again there were others who were like i don't know if they were just trying to catch the beat or what so at one point I recognize that yeah, this is this is a serious um, situation. Because I'm not gonna say it because I'm not gonna get in trouble. Um, so then, two of them were were strolling, and old girl hopped in too. Tried to hop in and didn't know what she was doing. Did not, and, and was swiftly removed. And one thing I learned in undergrad is you don't do anything affiliated to a greek organization if you are not a member of said greek organization like that was like the number one unspoken nphc rule it's pretty it's pretty universally understood like you just don't among do black it. black you don't college do students it. now and adults what people did behind college. closed doors um and in the confidence of their peers that's that's on them but in public spaces you just you didn't do it yeah. You had to respect it. It was just understood. Um, what bothered me the most, there's actually a lot of this bothers me. Because if you're going to go and perpetrate as a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the least you could do is show up prepared. <laughs> is show up prepare you have nail on like you purchased or stole or borrowed. Someone, or borrowed 
but you can't borrow it because one time it was raining and I was working a nature's bakery event and two of my BAs were AKAs and I was like man I don't have a rain jacket but one of them did and she was like I mean you could wear mine but then I gotta beat your ass and I was like I'll take my raindrops um I could have taken her though but it's interesting but I mean, they'll don't they'll tell them because I used to hear stories like you'll see like some old white woman in like an alpha T-shirt, and it's like why does she have an alpha? Because they donated it to like Goodwill, and that's not how you're supposed to dispose of your 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 nailia. So um, I remember when I like because when I I mean I went to college, I went and I, I thought I was going to become I was going to join a, a Greek organization. I didn't, but I was so exposed to them i like you you could learn it it's 2023 you could hop on youtube and you can see a stroll and you could i'm not saying do it i'm not condoning it i'm just saying if you're going to do it go all the way put in all the effort go watch a stroll competition go like all of this stuff like the first one they were doing i've seen it done i've had my foot stepped on while people were doing it because when you're in a club and that song comes on and they start strolling heads start flipping feet start stomping and if you don't move your toes it's criminal and you'll get shoved and pushed and they don't care it's like a train that's just coming do your due diligence and learn the stroll if you are going to get in front because i feel like we only saw so much on camera i don't know what happened after old girl pulled her off bless her for pulling her off i don't know where she pulled her to so i might have to retract that blessing but i was just bothered by that because i'm like if you're going to make the effort because you can go to the greek picnic and not be greek you can just go with a greek person um like the greek world doesn't alienate you i mean I'm, they have their meetings of course but like you're not alienated from going to a public Greek event. Buy your ticket, show up. Um, but if you're going to go through the effort of wearing the letters, joining the line, the least you could have done is learn the strolls. Because she looks stupid. So, sorry to that girl. Yeah. So... I think this comes down to exclusivity. Greeks are exclusive groups. Mm -hmm. They're popular. Mm -hmm. And they have a brother and sisterhood that's unlike many other non-related things, mm -hmm. like family-oriented th things. And they're cool. Mm -hmm. They're dope. They're fly. They got the strolls. They got the... They got the fits, mm -hmm. you know. It's just the, the cultural impact, right? They're they're ingrained in the culture, um, and I think people see that, and they want to be a part of it. And like you said, it is so easy to go on YouTube and memorize <clears throat> strolls, and or so you <laughs> so you thought you did, um, and you think you can just go buy some merch and blend in. But it also is a bit of a microcosm for, I think, whether it's generations or just society as a whole, is, is that people don't necessarily want to put in the work mm. that's required to be a part of that exclusive group. Because mm -hmm. everybody who is legitimately able to wear those letters and to stroll in those lines put in the work. some work some work different than others but at the end of the day it was work and I understand why people are so territorial over you know people being imposters and people wearing jackets um, because I blood sweat and tears into this in some cases likely legitimate like literally mm -hmm. so Nah, you're not about to just <laughs> not about to just come up in here and humiliate us, thinking that you, you know, nah, it's not it's not that sweet. So I get it. Um, I get the allure mm -hmm. of uh, fraternities and sororities. I, I get the the want to be a part of that 
exclusive mm -hmm. part of the culture. But, you know, if you're not willing to put in that work mm -hmm. to go through what you have to go through to, to be able to to sit at that table, you don't get to just come in and... No, you can't. And, uh, and, and be an imposter. But to your... You said something that triggered a thought in me that, like, maybe she did try. And maybe she wasn't, you know, because you still like the process yeah blood sweat and tears but there's also still you know metrics of this organization and do you as an individual fit in it doesn't matter you ain't make it you're not you don't have the I'm right not, again you don't have the I'm right you don't, you don't have the right to be there i'm not just to, to try to, to but impose i mean i feel like if she could do that i can just like just go around telling people i graduated from harvard no, you can't. I said I was going to put your MBA letters on the end of my um, Why? LinkedIn. Because you feel like it's it's ours. It's, it's ours. <laughs> it's both ours. Uh, I, I, I contributed. I put in some blood, sweat, and tears. That's funny. Oh, you actually did. Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to come to blows with my, over my MBA. Um, it's interesting. Anytime I I advance, it's always met with some friction. It's the timing of it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so I'm glad they got her up out of there. Hopefully, they ain't beat her up. I need a follow up. I need to go check the shade room and see what happens. Oh, I know oh. somebody. Somebody got. Oh, she's not. Oh, she's not in a trunk somewhere. <laughs> There's a high possibility uh, that's, that she's recovering in an ICU. Poor baby. Yeah. But I mean, it also, you know, you got to end everything with like the mental health trope. But it could be, you know, someone is. No, you don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> you absolutely do not. <laughs> you don't got to force. Um, no. I mean, she could just be lonely and desiring sisterhood <laughs> and just that familiar. Or she could just be somebody who thought she was slick. No, if you thought you were slick, you would have gotten on YouTube and learned the steps. Maybe she thought she did, and then she got in the heat of the moment and was like, oh, shit. Cause I was like, I haven't seen a stroll I said in. Shit a lot this episode. You have. I was like, I haven't seen a stroll in many a years, but I watched them enough in in school that we we talked about this with Carly Russell. We don't just be saying mental health just for the sake of it. Carly did have a mental health issue. There's clearly something happening in Alabama. Yeah, Everyone's people ain't edu mental. people ain't educated. <laughs> check them check them reading levels. But I don't condone um, perpetrating as a member of a Greek organization that you are not actually. I mean, they're even strict. Like, if you ain't paid your dues, like, you can't really even rep. You know about it. I get it. You're not going to tell me nothing. No, no. You're not going to tell me any rules, obligations, stipulations of a Greek organization where I'm going to be like, you know what? That's not. Nah. You got to work for it. Got to work for it. I just, I just, I need to, I need someone to interview her. I'm waiting. Not for everybody come. can be a part of everything. Mm -hmm. You gotta earn it. You know, a lot of people feel really, and I deal with that stuff at work, man. People just feel entitled to shit. Like, nah, gotta work. You want this? Sometimes, job. sometimes you gotta work harder. You can't just. I'm sure it, it required work to <laughs> put together. A, a uniform and and tell people that you were that you pledged at some at some school and to try to learn strolls. I'm sure that was work, but it doesn't compare to the real work that people put in when they were pledging. Mm -hmm. Legitimately. Yep. So, I mean, just the audacity. It is a lot of audacity. <laughs> like, like I said, it, audacity is thick as the humidity. I it's just the audacity, man. Like, and why would you just? I mean, these are sacred organizations, man. Why would you disrespect them like that? And why would you put your life at risk? Seriously. Like, this is not a place where, like, you'd be the only person pretending. Yeah, like, don't. don't like, do you're that. not Doogie Hauser. Don't do that. So, no sympathy. Hopefully they dealt with her accordingly. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to go to the shade room and see what the comments are, are talking about. It's in there. Uh, you good? You good? I'm good. I'm good. About what? I'm done. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm All tired. Right. 
So we'll talk about the blind side next week. Nah, we just. I'm sure we'll have more. more. Well, yeah, because they hit him with they hit a boy with the counter, the counter suit. But the counter doesn't really help their case. It doesn't. This whole thing is messy. Mess. <laughs> it's just messy. And like, at the root of it, I am so upset with Sasha. It's like, Bullock. bro, you waited till 2020. One twenty-two to try to get your money. Like what? Where's your wise counsel? And then, like, and where's Sandra Bullock? She's old, she's grieving. Old dude who played him, like he he made a statement. He was yeah, on he Inside Edition. She's grieving. Let her grieve. I'm like, you have black. Kids you know who we need to be coming for is Jennifer Aniston. Why? You ain't here. Hear what? Oh my God, Jess! This is like last week's news. Okay, I don't even want to talk about Jennifer Aniston yeah. and Jamie Foxx. That's who we need to be coming for. We do. She's but you trash. You don't have it. I don't have it. She's trash though. She's trash. They killed Jesus. Flat out. She's trash. But we can unpack that whole statement next week. I mean, we can, but because apparently it's like really controversial. It's not. It's not. Not in our. Not for me. I've heard that. I've heard variations of that. Like. My entire life. And I guess I'm not black enough because I haven't. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was like, why are you all upset about they killed Jesus? They yeah. did kill Jesus. Yeah. Individuals but, killed Jesus. Like somebody killed him. And they are they. <laughs> and they are they. Like, I don't. Man. And you talk about much ado about nothing, but that thing, people try to make a thing of that. And Jennifer Aniston, man. Yo, I'm so disappointed in her. No, I'm not. She's just trash. I'm very disappointed in Forget her. Forget Jennifer Aniston. I'm not watching. What's it called? What's that show on Apple TV? Oh, man. I did like that yeah, show, Yeah, I'm not too. watching it anymore. No Although, I haven't watched it past the first season. Yeah. They the did morning come show. Back. How many seasons are out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I it was, don't matter. It doesn't. I hope it gets canceled. And wasn't she at that? Wasn't she at that pic table when there was no black people? And that oh. picture somebody took where there was like actors and actresses and producers and famous people. Oh yeah, at that brunch or whatever, and with no black people. Not one. Yeah. Maybe it was the black person taking that picture. She found out. She found out. But yeah, she's. She, I, I have feelings towards her in my book. How you going Who skate? Who throws Jamie Fox under the bus after he who like we almost left us? Still don't even know what really happened. Almost to went to the upper room. And you got the nerve. Audacity. The audacity. Audacity is not. I'm telling you, man. But yeah, the uh, the Michael or the or thing would be interesting to see play out because. Mm-hmm. I think it's good we don't get to address it because then we'll see. We'll see it play out. But we'll this, take, we'll take these the, conservatorships. I I'm concerned. I'm not signing. Yeah, you you hand me something. I'm not signing it. I'll tell you that. That's for your signature. <laughs> Hey, Wait a minute. When did I say? When did I say I? Jessica would get everything, even if I'm still alive. Like when did I sign this? Um. All right. So, again, it's almost two in the morning. We failed. We failed the the tribe on two occasions. One, you're not going out. Mm-mm. Two, it's another. We had this perfect vision. It's of another life. plus hour podcast. Get these kids to sleep in in under thirty minutes. We're gonna start recording at eight. We're gonna finish recording at. 9 30 and then i was gonna go meet my girls out for 10 it's 1 36 in the morning it didn't happen no, it's not gonna happen one in the morning and we also didn't record we under an hour so. rush vibes for you yeah. so we'll be back next week um we're gonna have to record a couple episodes because you got a you got a trip coming up i leave on thursday you do leave on thursday so we can record wednesday potentially or tuesday and I'm taking some time off too. I'm looking forward to it. And be a vintage every day. Shay better not be sick. She's gonna be sick. I know it's gonna happen. Shay's gonna get sick. I'm gonna have to take care of these kids like an actual parent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be so upset. Just run them to Because anytime I take time off, something happens. Something happens. Every time. Unless we're going somewhere. And even then something happens. Mm-hmm. Like so I'm just waiting on what, on what it could be. Like either I'm going to be sick, kids going to be sick, Shay going to be sick. Just, well, Solace and Savi will be in school. So I, we'll I, know just it's, be I know I know it's going to happen. It's me and Sonoma going to be at the Sky Lounge. We're going to be chilling. Just sit we'll outside. Kicking it. Just sit outside. Yeah, we'll be sitting outside. Get her her iPad. And she'll just... she's gonna, yeah, she's going to be posted up. 
Be like you want puff? She be like, nah, I'm good. Man. Um. All right. So that's rush vibes this week, and uh, appreciate all the viewers out there, it's new subscribers, anybody who's just caught us on the YouTube suggestions or, or browse page. Appreciate you guys, and also to everybody who listens on the audio platforms: Apple, Spotify, Google. Tune in. Um. I think that's it. We appreciate you. DJ Khaled voice. Anything else? I'm good. Cool. See y'all next week. Bye, tribe. Peace. Do 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 do. Go up, go up, pass. Yeah. None but some grow pass. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now. Yeah.